Hey everyone, it's Hillary here. I am so excited that you're joining us today. Thank you so much for following the Safer at Home guidelines. Uh, we hope everyone is doing all right. And I got the most amazing phone call uh, last week from Jake Thomas, who plays my brother uh, Matt on Liz McGuire. And he threw out having a virtual table read of one of our old episodes of Liz McGuire. And I thought there's no better way to cure boredom and to provide a little bit of entertainment for everyone that's stuck at home. We are all here and I'm really excited for this. We hope you have a good time and we also wanted to ask if you're in the position to be able to donate uh, any money, then we have provided a few links below to some of our favorite charities. Um, and if not, no problem, thanks for being here and hopefully you could just help spread the word. So frontline responders, they get crucial PPE to medical professionals. Um, no Kid Hungry supports kids with meals. Um, baby to Baby provides children living in poverty with basic necessities that they need. Um, support and feed. They create partnerships with plant-based uh, small restaurants that provide meals to hospitals and um, senior centers and also first responders. And then obviously the LA Food Bank and the New York Food Bank and we all know what amazing work they do. So like I said, if you can, great, uh, please donate. And if not, thank you so much for being here and I hope you have fun with us. I'm going to introduce everyone. This is, this is so exciting. So. We haven't all been together in a very long time. First up, Lelaine. Hey. hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> all right, well, we all know that Lelaine plays Miranda. And I'm gonna introduce Adam Lambert now with that beautiful hey, beard. Hey, everybody. Mustache. Yeah. Mustache, mustache. <laughs> Jake Thomas, who put all of this together. Hello. Hey. I wanna play Gordo this time. <laughs> well, you got the mustache. <laughs> I do! <laughs> Maybe we can do that next week, just all swap characters. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, uh, Howie Todd, who plays Joe McGuire. Hey, Mom. Hey, guys. Bobby Carradine, who plays Dad, Sam. Hello, y'all. You can tell I've been in quarantine for quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> Rio, hey. Hey. She plays Kate. We have Davida Williams who plays Claire. Hi. And uh, we have Kyle Downs who is reading the role of David Carradine and he plays the hilarious Larry Tudgman who's not in this episode but we're so happy that uh, you're going to be reading David. Yay, thanks for having me guys. Hi Kyle. All right, and now we have the amazing writers of this script, Nina and Jeremy Barkle. Hello. Hi everybody. Yeehaw. Yeehaw! And then we also have Bob Thomas, who is actually Jake's dad, who wrote a couple episodes of Lizzie McGuire back in the day, and he's here and he's going to narrate the script for us. Hi, Bob. Hey, how are you? I've got my Bobby Carradine beard. <laughs> I'm not quite there yet. When I was introducing everyone, I was getting pretty teary-eyed. <laughs> <Aww. laughs> you guys, I almost forgot yours truly. <gasps> oh my oh. god! <laughs> oh my god, I better get this out now! I feel like I see that um. in my nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> should we get started? Let's do it. Sure, yeah, let's we can. Let's go for it. Okay. Hey, let's get started then. Let's first start with the two wonderful writers here, Nina and Jeremy. And we, before we get into this, <coughs> we find out uh, what was the genesis of this episode um so so jeremy is my older brother was mcguire was our first job and it was sort of a thing where i was like could we do this is this a thing we could like could we write about bras on the disney channel the feedback we got was well maybe but you got to put like a boy story with it like something big and active and jeremy's like well what about like martial arts and i literally just went kung fu and then David Carradine, and then it was very much like a chocolate and peanut butter moment, and it all just kind of happened. <laughs> you know, that story came together, and then you know the bra story. It was it was a little bit when the when the network asked us about that, they would raised eyebrows. They're like, okay, well, we're going to throw down the gauntlet. You can say the word twice, 
Uh, you can't ever show one, but it was definitely something that they thought we would just go away. And that's just the wrong approach, you know, for, for us. A little bra in that episode? I th- not like a close up, I don't think. No, like, yeah, it was, it was bras. like a pile of them. Yeah. They're all yeah, smoothed could, together. It's, it's kind of like Jaws in the original Jaws. <laughs> just that's what the bra it. was. Yeah, yeah. you know? <laughs> all right, well, the, on that note, I think we should probably get started. And speaking yes. of the theme song, um, I, I, no one else knows that, but um, you know, when, when when you guys, the viewers, used to uh, to watch all of us uh, in the show, and you would sing along in the theme song. Every time that we would have a table read, we also sang the the theme song. <laughs> you did, yeah. So I we kind gonna- of feel like we we should do it again. Let's let's move along then. <laughs> we're not we're not gonna sing. I mean, I can't sing, but I'm. No, I, I want to. No, no, no. I'm okay, gonna do it. Do it. Are you pleased? Oh yeah. We've oh, got, we got a picture perfect. perfect. We got a picture We do the best we can to print it. Oh God. Sometimes you fake it. Sometimes you fake it. One step closer each and every day. Oh my God. That was was so much more painful than I thought it was going to be. I have no memory of doing this at table reads. Are you yeah, really? Are you making this up? Like I no, I we did it, it every I time. You guys are making no memory of that. I remember the table reads. We sang at least I, the first part. We sang at least the first part. No, I don't remember. No, I don't remember doing that. Yeah. I don't remember doing that. Yeah, we sang the first part. Like, I do remember a lot of things, but I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't remember the crazy. I don't. You could be making. I it was up. like ten, and I I remember that vividly. <laughs> All right, it's time to start this episode. Okay, okay let's do it. Right. Let's <laughs> get there, into right. it. Then we'll shut down the internet. This was the 10th episode shot. It was shot the week of November 13th, 2000. Aired May 11th, 2001. But on Wednesday, November the 8th, 2000, the conference room at Renmar Studios, these fine people right here got together for a table read. And now 7,118 days later, you it again. Wow. <laughs> the title says, uh, the title says, what's Lizzie thinking? We know it was Lizzie McGuire, the episode between a rock and a bra place. So let's fade in the school hallway, the afternoon, Lizzie and Miranda are coming out of the girls' locker room after gym class. Is there some sort of rule that every time it's raining, we have to play dodgeball? It must be in the gym teacher's guidebook. Jenny Woods has a great arm. She's like the Mike Tyson of dodgeball. We see a picture of a little mousy and flat-chested girl, Jenny Woods, standing in the middle of a group of girls in gym class, holding a red rubber utility ball with a crazed gleam in her eye. She didn't used to be that way. She plays the OB. OB players aren't supposed to be violent, are they? It's the bra. Ever since she started wearing one, she's become a whole new person. Yeah, kind of like someone else we know. What is it with those things anyway? Claire and Kate get one and they become popular. And we see a picture of all the kids in the hallway bowing down before Kate and Claire. Jenny gets one and she becomes Brandy Chastain. If I had one, I'd be Lizzie Warrior Princess. An animated dodgeball enters the screen. She moves swiftly to avoid it and spears the ball on her Xena sword. It deflates. Lizzie's got game. It's not even like she even needs one. I mean, we need one before she does. So why don't we have one? We should have one. You're right. We're 13. It should be like a rule. Ask your mom for a ride to the mall after school. No way. You ask yours. Damn. She's working. Well, if we ask mine, she's going to go with us. You're right. So how about we tell her we need school supplies? You know that I'm not good at lying. Fine, so I'll lie. She can just drop us off. Yeah, okay. I guess that'll work. A plan this simple has to work. 
<laughs> An animated dodgeball comes out of nowhere and she evades it. Ugh, I should have seen that coming. We go to the McGuire house <laughs> foyer after school. Lizzie and Miranda enter Lizzie's house. Lizzie, is that you? What do I say? Yeah, it's us, Mrs. McGuire. Oh, hey, <gasps> girls. I'm in the kitchen. Not a word to your mom about the bra. We're going to the mall for school supplies. Repeat after me. School supplies. School supplies. The girls walk into the kitchen. Joe's at the kitchen table with a laundry basket. Lizzie and Miranda enter. Hey, Mrs. McGuire. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Miranda elbows hey. Lizzie. Hey, girls. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hey, girls. How was school? Fine. Joe looks at them for a second. So, what's up? Nothing. Lizzie, I've got one more load of laundry to do. If you want, I can wash Mr. Snuggles. He's looking a bit dingy these days. It says nothing. Both girls look a little nervous. Lizzie? Um, yeah, okay. I, I don't really care what you do with Mr. Snuggles, okay? Because stuffed animals are for babies and we're adults. Joe stops folding the laundry. But you've had that stuffed pig since you were two. He's one of your favorite toys. Was my favorite toy, okay? I don't, I don't need toys anymore because I'm an adult now. We are both adults now. Yeah, independent adults. So, Miss McGuire, can we have a ride to the mall? Sure. What do you need? School supplies. Animated Lizzie's on the table set in stone. I'm a rock. I'll never crack. School supplies. Okay. For what? School supplies. Um, for a project. <laughs> okay. Uh, hold that thought. Hello? Miranda glares at Lizzie. What was that? School supplies? You were supposed to keep your mouth shut. Come on, let's put our books in your room before you totally spill your guts. The girls leave, and then Matt and Sam enter. Matt is holding open a martial arts magazine and pointing out something to his father. See? I told you, Jet Li is looking for a sidekick in his new movie, The Untitled Jet Li Project. Wow, what a great title. Aren't you a little young for this? Nope. It says right here, ages 10 and up. And I'm 10. <laughs> Matt hands the magazine to his father. Obviously. <laughs> Joe returns from the phone. Sam looks at the magazine. Yeah, you're right. What do you think, honey? Your contest entry in the Jet Li Sidekick Sweepstakes can be a video, an essay, or even an audio tape. That's a terrible idea. I don't want him doing this. Listen, he's not going to win, so we don't have to tell him no. I mean, someone else will. We get the credit for being cool parents. Honey, I think it's a great idea. <laughs> Matt then grabs a wooden cutting board from the kitchen counter and tries to break it with his head. Oh! <laughs> um, we're going to write the best essay this magazine's ever seen. Um, essay? <laughs> Uh, writing isn't exactly my best subject. Don't worry, son. You're talking to the man who won a free trip to Washington, D.C. in 1976 for his brilliant bicentennial essay, America, It's More Than Amber Waves of Brain. Yeah. Sounds great. I'll get it. McGuire Foyer, Lizzie comes running down the stairs. She opens the door to reveal... Gordo. Hey. Uh, you can't be here. And yet I am here. Uh, your mom said we're going to the mall? Gordo just walks past Lizzie and into the kitchen. Lizzie follows. Hey, Gordo. That was quick. Miranda comes back. I called my mom at work. She's cool with the mall. Why are you here? I invited him. When? When I just called. I figured if you guys need supplies for a school project, Gordo does too. Um, no, Gordo doesn't need any school supplies. <laughs> <laughs> what school project? You're not in that class. I'm in all of your classes, except for Jim. Well, that's it. It's a very special 
secret gym project that only me and Miranda need to go shopping for. Miranda covers her face with her hands and shakes her head. The kitchen is silent while Joe, Matt, Gordo, and Sam all stare at Lizzie. What's the project, Lizzie? Lizzie looks at Miranda. It's um for it's Lizzie. Lizzie looks at Miranda who shrugs helplessly. Lizzie. Um animated Lizzie on the table, still under the heat lamp, sweating profusely. Ah, uh, yeah, I'd like to see a lawyer. Lizzie, what do you need from the mall? We close in on Joe's mouth in slow motion. Tell me the truth. A bra! Okay, I want a bra! A moment of stunned silence and then the kitchen erupts. Joe claps her hands and hugs Lizzie. Miranda shakes her head. Gordo and Matt recoil in disgust. Sam looks perplexed. Ew! That's disgusting! What? Isn't she a little young for that? Absolutely not. Oh, honey, what was I thinking? I should have suggested this months ago. I would be delighted to take you girls shopping. Let me get my purse. Um, Mrs. McGuire, uh, suddenly I don't want to go to the mall with you guys anymore. So, uh, Joe, Lizzie, and Miranda leave. Gordo, Matt, and Sam all look at each other for a beat. So what about those Mets, huh? <laughs> yeah, I don't really care. I'm just glad we don't have to talk about bras anymore. I have to go home and, 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 and do something. Any, anything, anything but this. Hey, Gordo, you, you want to stay and help us with Matt's uh, contest entry? Yeah, I'm going to be Jet Li's new sidekick. Whoa! You're gonna let him do this? Absolutely. Okay, so uh, what do you guys got? We're gonna write an essay. We're gonna call it Martial Arts Matt. Amber weighs a grain. A confused Matt stands in front of the Washington Monument with his G. <laughs> that could work. Unless you have a better idea. But it'll have to be pretty good to beat a, a proven winner. Well, I, we could film Matt reading his essay. I, I could go home and get my camera. Now that's a great idea. I'll be back in 10. Gordo takes off and Matt is kung fuing. Hey, buddy. Um, I, I thought we were going to write an essay. Yeah, let's call that plan B, Dad. Matt kung fu's across the kitchen and we go to the mall. Joe, Lizzie, and Miranda approach the lingerie department. The girls hang back a little, trying not to be seen with Joe. You cracked like an egg. Well, I got us here, didn't I? Yeah, with your mom. A saleswoman approaches the girls. Can I help you two with something? Hi, we're shopping for their first bras. Isn't this cool, girls? Where's the little miss section? Over there by the footy pajamas. Thank you. Come on, girls. See, and Miranda walk over to the Little Miss section. Mom, listen, can we be a little quieter about this? About what, honey? Nothing. Animated Lizzie's on the cash register. Why doesn't she get her own talk show and broadcast it to the world? <laughs> she rifles through the racks. Can <laughs> we teach her? No, but we can't pretend to get lost. Come on, let's go. Excuse me. Sorry. 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 Excuse me. Excuse me. They look up and they bump into Mr. Cooper Smith, their cute English teacher from school. Oh, hi, Lizzie. Hi, Miranda. Cooper Smith. No, no, not happening. I am not running into my cute English teacher in the you know what department. Shouldn't you be home like handling grammar emergencies? I'm just buying a present, uh, a birthday present for my wife. Oh, uh, well, um, we're, uh, we're, Full supplies. <laughs> <laughs> they all three look at each other uncomfortably, and Joe comes back. Girls, I've got a whole bunch of good ones. Oh, Mr. Cooper Smith, hello. Why don't you take these to the dressing room? Lizzie Miranda take the pile from Joe and exit, and then we see animated Lizzie on the cash register. This has got to be enough to get me into the witness relocation program. <laughs> And we go back to the McGuire living room. 
Gordo has returned with his camera. Sam is on the couch scribbling furiously on a pad of paper. Where's Matt? Upstairs getting ready. So I came up with a list of interview questions. Uh, what's your name? How old are you? Where do you go to school? That's one of my favorites. <laughs> These are really, really great questions, Mr. McGuire, but uh, there are all other ways we can go. Matt Look. comes downstairs dressed in a makeshift G, the traditional martial arts uniform, a random assortment of white clothes clenched at the waist with Sam's black tie. Looks great, Matt. Uh, so I was thinking, uh, what we need to do is get some cool establishing shots of um, you raking in the Zen garden. Wait, 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 wait. We, we don't have a Zen garden. What, what about my questions? Well, the questions aren't very... Boring. The questions are boring, Dad. Oh, oh, Mr. McGuire, if Matt's going to win this thing, you need something big, something different, something that's going to set Matt's entry apart from the rest. So what do you suggest, Gordo? I think we need to shoot our own martial arts film. You are way too cool to be Lizzie's friend. And we go back to the mall. Lizzie and Miranda are each side by side dressing rooms. The curtains are closed and we can tell who's in what room by the girl's specific footwear. Okay, can we just have a look? Our English teacher just saw us in the little miss section. And your mom is probably telling him what we're doing here. Okay, pretending to get lost didn't work. So now what should we do? Mom, we're supposed to be adults. So? So tell her we want to shop alone. If you're so adult, then you tell her. Are you insane? You tell her. I'm not telling her. At that moment, Joe enters the dressing room. She walks up to Lizzie's closed curtain and pulls the tie. Tell me what. Uh, Lizzie oh, is dressed. Mom, I could have been... <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, come on. It's just us girls here. Uh, no, it's, it's not. <sighs> I brought some more things for you guys to try on. Okay, can we just find some things on our own? I'm just trying to help. We don't need your help. Okay. What do you need? We need you to leave us alone, okay? You're, you're always going on about how we're little adults, and then when we try to act like them, you treat us like we're children. And we're not children, okay? We're, we're not. Okay. Um, okay. Here's $40. Um, meet me in the food court when you're when you're all done. Joe leaves, Miranda pokes her head out from behind the curtain. That's not exactly how I pictured the adult conversation between you and your mom. Okay, well, me neither, but you know what? A girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do. On the plus side, we're alone in the mall with your mom's cash. Okay, I, I know I got exactly what I wanted, but why don't I feel any better? Miranda grabs her by the arm and drags her off. Later in the mall lingerie department, Lizzie and Miranda are looking through the racks. God, this is so much easier without my mom hanging around. Exactly. So what are we looking for? I don't know. But I thought you knew. I thought I did too. The camera zooms out to show them lost in the lingerie department. But there's all these letters and, and numbers? 32, 34, 36, A's, B's, C's? I, I didn't think there'd be math involved. I know, okay, okay, all right, listen, Kate owns one. How hard is Kate? around, they're lost. You're right. If Kate and her friends can do it, we can do it. They look around again, they're still lost. Just then Kate enters, Miranda and Lizzie recoil in horror. <gasps> what are you guys doing here? <laughs> you must be lost. The dork section is on the first floor. Uh, is there some kind of a rule that Kate and her posse have to witness every moment of misery in my life? We're shopping. Yeah. Shopping. For what? They don't carry under roofs here. Before they have a chance to answer, Claire's mom interrupts. Claire, Kate. I can't believe you're shopping with Claire's mom. Yeah, we don't have to shop with my mom. You guys have never been here, have you? Mrs. Miller enters. Claire, there you are. Hi, Lizzie. Hi, Miranda. I haven't seen you girls around for a while. Where's your mom? Oh, we're shopping by ourselves. By yourselves? So do you girls need a little help? Nope. We're fine. Yeah, no. No help. 
Okay then, tell your moms I said hi. Mrs. Miller exits. The footy pajamas are over there in the toddler section. Good one. Peyton Claire walk off. <laughs> like I would ask Miss Miller for help. But we need help. Well, what do you want me to do? Find a salesperson? And say what? We, we don't even know what kind of questions to ask. You're right. You're so lost. This was your idea. I thought it was yours. I have no idea what I'm doing. This is a total mistake. I mean, maybe we're not ready. You know what? I don't need a salesperson, and I don't need Miss Miller. Miranda, I need my mom. Which has an idea you've had all day. And we go back to the McGuire backyard. Gordo is filming Matt, who is raking a pile of gravel in a corner of the backyard. Sam looks bewildered. And this is gonna, gonna grab their attention how? <laughs> Zen garden, Mr. McGuire. People in the East use it as a form of relaxation. We're showing that Matt understands the, the Kung Fu culture. We're raking rocks. I am one with the universe. It finishes. I am done. <laughs> okay, for this next scene, Mr. McGuire, I have a very important job for you. If you could just press this red button when I say action. Yeah? Well, what else? When I say cut, you press it again. Oh, okay. Gordo goes over to Matt and shows him something on a notepad. Gordo and Matt take up positions facing each other. And action. In the camera point of view, through the lens of Matt and Gordo, Matt and Gordo adopt kung fu stances. Gordo delivers the next speech in bad kung fu movie dubbing action. The move, you know, the moves his mouth for a bit before any words or sound comes out. You should never come back here, Matthew Sai. And now I will be forced to destroy you. <laughs> you cannot destroy what you cannot see. Then Matt begins his kung fu moves. Oh, I'm just, I'm just doing it. Okay. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> they look at each other for a beat. Then Gordo lets out an ear piercing battle cry. Ah! <laughs> they begin to battle. Their fight is obviously fake, like the last scene of Bowfinger. The battle scene ends when Gordo surrenders. He kneels in front of Matt. You have defeated me, Matthew's on. and save the world. Gordo keels over, Matt puts his foot on him. That's just what Jet Lee's sidekick does. Cut! I bet the film keeps going. Cut! It's still the going. The wire, the red button! Oh! We go back to the scene, Gordo and Matt run over to Sam. How did it look, Mr. Wire? Good! But we need to explain why he's the best choice. That's where you come in, Mr. McGuire. You're in the final scene. Oh, great. Um, well, let me get my questions. Actually, Dad, uh, Gordo wrote out what you're supposed to say. Gordo hands the sheet of paper to Sam. Matt throws Joe's kimono over Sam's shoulders. Is it this your mom's kimono? It's your costume. Okay, you stand here, and Matt stands over here. Any questions? None? Great, good, let's get started. Gordo and goes the camera. Master, I have saved the world. Truly, I deserve to be Jet Li's sidekick. No, only when the student can take the pebble from the master does the student become Jet Li's sidekick. Sam holds out an open palm with a pebble. Matt grabs it and does a victory dance. I am martial arts Matt! Amber waves of pain. Cut, 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 cut. Uh, Mr. McGuire, look, this is the climax of the movie. It's kind of important that you follow the script. Again? No, no, you gotta close your hands so Matt can't take the stone. You gotta make it look hard. I'm sorry, Gordo, but I, I don't think a kung fu ripoff is gonna be better than a well thought out and grammatically correct essay. What are you talking about, Dad? It's totally better. Well, you guys seem to know a lot more about this stuff than I do, so I'm, I'm just going to let you two finish up. Sam walks off dejected, still kimono clad, and we go back to the mall. 
Joe is sitting alone at a table, dejectedly sipping at a soda, and the girls approach her. Hi, girls. Did you finish shopping? Not exactly. Yeah, it didn't go the way we planned. Girls, I'm so sorry. Mom? No, Lizzie, let me finish. I remember when I was 13 and my mom took me shopping, she did everything imaginable to embarrass me. I promised myself I'd never act that way with my own daughter. You didn't act the same way. You're right. I was worse. You are becoming adults, and I should have let you do this on your own. No, you really shouldn't have. Mom, we're not adults. Not even close. Yeah, and, and that temper tantrum I threw in the dressing room, not exactly adult material. So, I'm sorry. Me too. I guess sometimes the, the adult thing to do is just ask for help. You guys didn't buy anything, did you? Nope. Nada. Well, come on. Let's go shopping. And I need my $40 back. Well, they forget to sign the field trip forms, forget you don't like liverwurst, but they never forget when they give me cash. And we head back to the McGuire living room. Sam looks through the French doors toward the backyard where Matt and Gordo are trying to finish. Sam picks up the phone and starts to dial. Um, do you still eat trunk food? And Gordo and Matt are trying to finish up the pebble scene. Gordo has a box set up to stand on when he's acting the part of the master. He runs to turn on the camera and then hops on top of the box. Gordo, we've done this seven times already. Are we done yet? A montage sequence of Gordo and Matt trying to finish the pebble scene. I'm sorry, Matt. This was a lot easier when your father was helping. So let's go get him. Here comes Sam. Ms. McGuire, we, we really need your help again. Uh, yeah, you, you can even ask the questions. Guys, look, I don't know much about this uh, kung fu stuff, but I have a friend who does. David Carradine oh. is in full kung fu regalia. Grasshopper. Matt looks around then at Sam. Dad, why is he calling me Grasshopper? Just go with it. <laughs> Your father tells me that you want to be a martial artist. Yeah, I want to be Jet Li's sidekick. Hmm. I have much to teach you, but you must be willing to learn. Okay. You go to the montage sequence. Kung Fu Fighting. Everybody was Kung Fu Fighting. Do we have the right to that? <laughs> well, I can Sam. sing a few words of it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> David, Sam, Gordo, and Matt all stand in a line doing Kung Fu moves. Generic but Kung Fu song. He faces Gordo and throws Kung Fu moves. <laughs> David and Sam face off. As David starts to throw Kung Fu moves, Sam runs away. It breaks the Zen garden. David faces Matt and holds out a closed fist. And we go back to the scene. David is still standing in front of Matt. He opens his fist to reveal a pebble. The camera pulls back to reveal Gordo filming the scene as Samley proudly looks on. When the student can take the pebble from the master's hand, the student will become Jet Li's sidekick. Camera point of view with David and Matt. Matt tries to snatch the pebble from David's hand, but David makes a fist. Master, why do you close your hand? You have many questions, young grasshopper. But I have a question for you, Matt. Sam walks into the frame and hands David a list of questions. What makes you the best choice to be Jed Lee's sidekick? Matt thinks about this. Well, uh, because I'm smart and funny and I watch all of his movies and I can do my own stunts. Matt's hand whips out, takes the pebble from David's hand in a blur of movement. David reacts in amazement. How did you do that? Matt holds the oh, yeah. up in the air. Oh yeah, who's your grasshopper now? Woohoo! Cut, that's a wrap, people. Back to the scene, Gordo and Sam start to clean up. David bows to Sam. My work here is done. He walks off alone to the sound of a single flute. 
<laughs> runs over to his father. Dad, high five. <laughs> You're the coolest. Mr. McGuire, who was that guy? I've known him for years, Gordo. He's like a brother to me. Now we go back inside the McGuire house. Lizzie's bedroom, Miranda's bedroom, Gordo's bedroom. Later that night, Lizzie is sitting on her bed, a shopping bag next to her, and Joe knocks on the door. Honey, I just want to make sure we were okay after everything that happened today. Yeah, we're okay. Good. Well, I better get dinner started. So Joe gets up to leave, but Lizzie stops her. Um, Mom, could you... Uh, Put Mr. Snuggles to the laundry. He's a little ripe. I thought stuffed animals were for babies. I was wrong. But that's just between you and me. Got it. Joe leaves and the phone rings. It's Miranda and Gordo. The screen splits three ways to show Lizzie, Miranda, and Gordo. Hello? Hey. Oh, I was just telling Gordo about our day. <laughs> and I was silently hoping she would stop. I can't believe you spend all afternoon with Matt and my dad. Hey, Matt and your dad are pretty cool. I, you know, we made a kung fu movie, and um, considering the alternative, I'd say it was a good choice. Yeah, well, I don't think we're going to be having any more girl-only shopping trips for quite a while. Yeah, Gordo. It's safe to go with us to the mall again. Cool, but when you guys start talking about shopping for school supplies, let me know when you mean school supplies or, uh, you know, school supplies. <laughs> Deal. Yeah. And my work here is done. And she walks off to the sound of a single flute. Switch to the McGuire kitchen. Sam picks up the ringing telephone. Um, hello? Yes, this is Matt McGuire's father. Who's this? You're calling from the Jet Li sidekick contest? Really? Ha! He won? Matt is really going to be Jet Li's sidekick? <laughs> yeah! Wait, now he's excited about it. In the original, he hated it. Yeah, we've come full circle. <laughs> and that's the end of the episode. And I think of, of all the episodes uh, where at least my character was doing something crazy and you know weird, uh, this one was definitely, I think, the one I could really like indulge myself in of being like 11 years old and just like, I get a karate outfit. I get to do karate. This is great. And, you know, I remember getting in an Elvis costume because you got. Yeah, like, yeah, that, um, was, the, was, that was the that was the I mean, that was the that was the science Olympics, Olympics, which was a real thing at our high school. Hillary, when you finished this episode, were you satisfied? Did it feel like you made a difference with it? Do you feel like, or were you uncomfortable the whole week? No, I I wasn't uncomfortable the, the whole week. Like I said before, we all became such a family. Um, you know, the, the crew included that I think for the most part, um, everything was, we had so much fun. I mean, I think that I was like getting paint thrown on me and slime thrown on me and like food fights and, you know, all kinds of crazy shit all the time that, you know, we, we got to just like have so much fun. But there was that like part inside of me that was like, I'm still, it's weird that like it's new that I'm wearing a bra and that now, you know. I'm acting out this scene that is very close proximity to my real life, like starting to wear a bra. Um, but I don't think it was until after, you know, the episodes aired and I got a little older that I really appreciate, you know, the writers and what you guys, wrote, you know, to, to create such a span of relatability with the young girls, but also just like you were saying before, Nina, where, you know, older girls wanted to watch the show because they had all gone through that before. So it was so touching to so many people on, on, on so many different levels. And um, I don't think it was until later that I really appreciated that about the show. I was just going to say with what Hillary was saying, like, I think it was awkward for a second because it was that age where we were developing. And, but it was only for a second that it was awkward and like, it was almost as if once that episode was done, it wasn't even a thought because I think we were experiencing that together mm -hmm. and like with, with Hillary. And I think it was like, I don't know. It was like a throwaway after that and not something I thought too much about anymore after, at least not for a bit, you know? 
And don't you think we always got such a kick out of like entertaining the crew? Like when we could get a big laugh out of everyone after a take, we, it was so rewarding <laughs> that like it put us on the level of like friends instead of like 13 year old actors that, you know, were trying to live in an adult world or something. It never felt like that when I was, when I was there. I, I always felt like there was a very protective energy from everybody in the company um, around you kids, you know what I mean? I mean, I don't, I wasn't in your shoes, so I, and I was a grown up when I did the show, and so I didn't have it from a kid's point of view, but I always felt like everybody just got such a kick out of you guys as kids, you know, and, and really, really truly enjoyed you, and it wasn't like an eye roll, like, oh my God, here come the kids. I mean, no. it was about you guys, and it was, and, and everybody was into it. I wasn't wearing bras yet. I was wearing like sports bras and wardrobe gave me my like actual first like underwire bra that I would wear you were for the show, but I like did not wear bras. So this whole <laughs> thing was so foreign and weird and like uncomfortable, but yeah, it, it was, it was this kind of similar to what Hillary and Lillane were saying. Um, together is just like, I think that was the growing up process. Because yeah. I mean, we didn't go to school on you know going to school on set in between takes or whatever and I think it was the importance of us going through that together and again didn't know how crucial that was necessarily in the moment we knew right. we were going through that it wasn't until like Nina was saying until way later when I rewatched it where I was like oh wow that that was really relatable I feel like did you guys ever feel bad having to be so mean to us uh, I did yeah it was really like I also was like looking I was watching old episodes and I was like some of the lines we say are so mean and they're funny but the way we say it is so serious there was not even like a hint of a smile in my face the entire time we're saying it it was it was it was pretty awful <laughs> so it, I did feel kind of bad and Ashley I mean, do you agree with that laughing about yeah I mean I remember whenever people would come up to me when they would recognize me it was I don't know. Most of them are like, oh my God, you're so mean. Why are you so yeah. mean to Lizzie? You should be nice to her. Or there was other times where it's like, hey, <laughs> if you blame us, you should have blamed us. Yeah, I said, they make me do it. I don't. <laughs> they make me do it. And then other kids, they would be just like too scared to come up to me. They'd be like hiding behind their moms or something. Like, it's okay, I'm nice in real life, I swear. <laughs> Yeah, you guys are inspiration for queen bees today, though. You know, like I think of like the memes that go about of of your your two characters. You guys are the it all stems memes. From you. You're like, yeah, <laughs> well, that's great meme. yeah. But, like, in, a, in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Kyle, uh, I gotta ask: Do you still have the Tudgeman T-shirt? And sure. did they did it ever get washed? Did it ever get washed? I don't think it got washed in the first season because remember there were a couple of days where it smelled a little ripe, but I think they got a double button. <laughs> Didn't we all like rub a booger on it before like last day or something? something like that. that should yeah. be in the Smithsonian. Husband yeah. shirt no, should be in the Smithsonian. Uh, storage locker in Canada at this point. <laughs> I, I don't know. I gotta dig that's, it. That's a high value storage locker. I'll say right. that. Okay. Um, well, that was so much fun and crazy. All the memories that just came flooding back hearing the lines, it feels honestly like yesterday that we were in that moment and all there together. And you know, that was almost 20 years ago, like Bob said. So um, I truly believe that this show was magical and everyone that was a part of it um, created that, you know, and made, made this show mean so much to so many people. So, um, <sighs> It, it's, uh, I think we're all really grateful to have experienced that. Um, anyway, I hope everyone that watched at home enjoyed this and took that little lap down memory lane with us. Uh, we love you. We hope that you are staying safe and staying sane through this wild time. Um, and remember, we added some links below to some charities that are doing amazing things right now that we all um, have been involved with and feel very passionate about. So if you can, go check those out possibly donate and um yeah hope you enjoyed thanks for being here with us bye. Thank, you. Bye. thank you thank you thank you support communities in need